In this demo, we're going to learn how to use the Virtual Machine Role Authoring tool to create a Linux-based resource extension. Now, the demo does presuppose that you're already familiar with concepts like resource definitions, resource extensions, and view definitions, so we're not going to drill too deeply into the details of those artifacts, but we are going to take the opportunity to show you how easy it is to create a Linux resource extension using the Virtual Machine Role Authoring tool. To get started, I simply click File and choose New Linux Resource Extension Package. I have to give it a name, and I'm going to call this CentOS MySQL Server Demo. And I have to give it a folder in which the tool is going to output any artifacts. The tool gives me a default resource extension using the name that I provided, a default generated version, and an unspecified publisher. I'll go ahead and leave the name and version the same and change the publisher field. Resource requirements allow you to specify tags that must exist on OS virtual hard disks in order to be used by this gallery item when it's deployed by an end user. Because this is a Linux-based resource extension, the tool's gone ahead and added a default tag of Linux. I want to use a different tag, however, so I can simply click the X to remove that tag and either type in a tag that I want to use or choose from a list of recommended tags that the tool provides. In this case, I'll use the CentOS Linux 6 tag. I click the plus button, and now I have a resource requirement specified for this particular resource extension. If I needed to add multiple tags, I could do that as well. Data packages are used primarily with Windows-based resource extensions, uh, and they facilitate the use of payload that must be delivered inside of the guest. For a Linux-based resource extension, however, we really only have uh, one set of customization options and those are underneath the application profile, and we call them run once commands. And I can execute one or more run once commands inside the guest during provisioning. For this example, I'm going to execute 10 run once commands. I'm going to simply insert a series of commands here, and I'll start pasting in the commands that I want to execute inside the guest in the order that I want to execute those commands. The first thing I want to do is use yum to go ahead and install MySQL and the MySQL server package. I use the dash y parameter here because this is an unattended installation, so I pre-accept all the EULAs and conditions that go along with downloading that package. The next thing I want to do is make sure that my firewall is configured inside the guest to allow access to the MySQL server on port 3306. So I paste in this command to accept that port inbound, and another command to allow that port to proceed outbound, and a third command to go ahead and save the firewall configuration within the guest so that it's not lost upon reboot. Next, I add a series of commands to account for the MySQL server service, the daemon, and finally, I go ahead and make sure that the MySQL Server service is started in the machine. Now when MySQL Server is installed, the default root account password is going to be blank, and I don't want to allow that, so I'm going to ask the end user to provide a MySQL root password, and I'm going to use this command inside the guest to set that password. You'll notice the format of parameters in resource extensions are the same as they are in resource definitions, namely an opening bracket, followed by param dot, a friendly internal name of the parameter, and a closing bracket. You'll also notice that I can use parameters in line to commands. And once I paste that command, the tool knows that I have a parameter inside of that particular statement. The next thing I'm going to do is enable remote management of this MySQL server through this command. You'll notice that I use the same parameter MySQL root password so that I can prompt the user one time for the value of that password and use it in multiple commands. You'll notice that I have an error on this line and it says that my run once command has incorrect parameterization. That's because in this parameter I use the correct format but in this particular parameter I forgot to type the param dot so the tool won't let me proceed. I can simply fix that up and now everything is good again. The final command I want to execute is to make sure that those privileges that I just granted take effect immediately. 
So I paste in my final command, and everything looks good within the tool. Now you can also see that I have two different parameters that have been specified here. The MySQL root password, and also the remote host from which management will be allowed to this MySQL server. And when I look at the parameters, the tool has decided that they should both be of type string. However, I want my MySQL root password to be a secure string, so I can simply click the type and choose from a drop-down of available types. I'm going to choose secure string. I'm going to validate my ResX, and I have zero errors and zero warnings. I'm going to go ahead and save the file. And if we look at the output, the tool has gone ahead and generated a ResX package for me, along with a working directory that contains the raw artifacts. Finally, before we go ahead and bind this ResX to an existing resource definition, I want to point out that the tool does also allow you to view the JSON that's been generated as a result of all the work I've done within the tool so far. The next step in making this available as a gallery item to an end user is to bind this resource extension to a resource definition. Now I could create a new resource definition package from the tool, but I have one that was created in a previous demo, so I'm simply going to drag that into the tool so that I can wire up the ResX to the ResDef. If I drag my file window open here again and go back to demos, I have an existing ResDef package and I can simply drag that into the tool's left bar and the tool will go ahead and load that ResDef up for me. Now when I look at the properties of the resource definition, I see that it does not have any extension references. However, because I have this existing resource extension already open in the tool, the tool allows me to simply bind to that resource extension and it will go ahead and auto-populate the bindings as well as bring in any of the parameters that are found within the resource extension. You can see that it's brought in the MySQL root password and the remote management host parameters and they're now available within my resource definition parameters so that when the end user goes to deploy this item they'll be prompted for those values. You can also see that it brought in the correct type for those parameters and also made a new application settings for me. An application settings section essentially translates to another page within the deployment wizard and the tool's gone ahead and brought in the two parameters from the resource extension into that section page. We can go ahead and inspect the defaults that the tool's populated for me. It's given me new localization labels to provide friendly values for the label of this parameter, the description of the parameter, and the required message of the parameter. I could also go ahead and specify things like minimum and maximum length, as well as a validation expression to make sure, for example, that users have used a complex password when they've gone ahead and entered that value. I'm going to leave all the defaults for the secure string, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the MySQL Server Demo Remote Management Host parameter. Again, this parameter is going to allow a user to specify a host from which the MySQL Server instance can be remotely managed. By using a default of the percent sign, this would enable remote management of this MySQL Server instance from any host. I'm going to provide a default value of percent for the end user, but I'm also going to let the end user override that should they want to only allow remote management from a single host, for example. Again, I could provide things like min and max length validations and required messages, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the rest of the defaults in the tool. I can go ahead and validate, and I see that I have no errors and no warnings. So everything looks good with this particular item. I'm going to go ahead and save the resource definition, and the extension, and remove them from the tool. And the tool gives me one final chance to go ahead and save the artifacts as I remove them. I'll click Yes, and we'll move on to the next step, which is importing the resource extension into Virtual Machine Manager. In Virtual Machine Manager, I've gone ahead and copied over my ResX package to a local directory. I've also opened up VMM PowerShell because the import process is only available from the CLI. The import commandlet is import cloud resource extension, and I have to give it a resource extension path, as well as a library share to which I want to import the resource extension. I've already gone ahead and uh, put a library share reference into a variable called $ls. And finally, to speed up the process, my library server allows 
uh, unencrypted transfer, so I'm going to use that parameter option as well. We can see that the import has taken place successfully, and uh, as a final sanity check, I have the ResX output sitting there in the PowerShell window, and everything looks good from a VMM perspective. So our next step in the process will be to import the resource definition into the Windows Azure Pack portal gallery, as well as make that uh, gallery item available to end users through a plan. So I'm logged into the Windows Azure Pack portal as a service administrator, and I'm on the VM Clouds tab to the left. On the top, we see that I have a number of options, such as clouds, virtual machines, networks, automation, and gallery. I'm going to ac access the Gallery tab, and I'm going to choose to import a new gallery item by clicking the Import button at the bottom of the screen. I browse to my resource definition file, which is CentOS 6 MySQL Demo, and click the checkbox to uh, initiate the import. Once the gallery item has been imported, we see that it's available here in the CentOS MySQL VM role, and I can click the arrow to the right of that to go ahead and look at the properties of that particular gallery item. The first thing I need to do is make the gallery item public by clicking the Make Public button at the bottom. And after the gallery item is public, I can go ahead and assign that item to plans. I'm going to assign this item to a demo plan that I pre-created. And the portal tells me that it was successfully added, and it might take some time for it to show up for end users. I find that this is typically pretty quick, so I'm going to switch over to my tenant view here, and I'm already signed in as a user, uh, which has access to that demo plan. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my browser, and choose to create a new virtual machine role item from Gallery. You can see that my MySQL Server VM role is available for deployment. When I click Next, I have to give the VM role a name. I then give basic virtual machine properties, such as the size of the instance I want to create, choose an operating system disk, provide the root account password, as well as a computer name pattern. While I have a sensible default here, I'll change that. Choose which network I want this VM role to use, how many initial instances I want to deploy, provide a DNS domain name, and I also have the option to specify an SSH public key. When I click Next, I get to the Application Settings page that we showed in the View Definition before. Now, I could have changed these labels to make them more user-friendly by, by editing the Resources file of the View Definition, but I left the defaults here for demo purposes. Because this is a secure string, my input is not only masked, but I'm also asked to confirm the password since I can't see what I'm typing. And the portal tells me that the values I entered do not match. I can go ahead and rectify that, and I can leave the default of percent, or I could put it in my own remote management host if I wanted to. My final step in deploying this item would be to click the checkbox at the bottom, but because this demo is simply about using the authoring tool, we're not going to go ahead and complete that. But I do hope that the demo has shown you how easy it is to create a Linux-based resource extension and get that extension made available to your end users in the Windows Azure Pack portal. Thank you very much.